the Aloha Hour with Johnny and Dewey. I love it. All right. Um, <laughs> today we You're have. You're right. You're 100 correct. As every time, uh, we have a very special guest today. I'm going to try to introduce him the right way. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a two-time Grey Cup champion who holds the CFL record for most all purpose yards in a regular season cfl's most un- outstanding player award afl or rookie team john argo agro special teams award runner-up must <laughs> mosi tatupu it, award stop, stop. cfl all-star hey, we cfl east shit. all-star stop, stop, father stop, of three stop, wait 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 stop. We don't there's have, more. We're gonna run out wait there's chat. more Fuck, we're not gonna have time for the show yeah. Uh, look, um, we have, he's an entrepreneur, he's a trainer, he's a motivational speaker, a vlogger, an actor, a husband, father of three. Did I forget anything? Oh, wait. <laughs> and I just found out that in 2013, I think you also had a um, MMA fight. Holy yes, shit. Which I watched. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> man, you're an uh, animal. Yeah. So, did I forget anything? No, man. Uh, and even if you did, it's all good. I think that's plenty. That's yeah. plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm a firm believer of like, you know, what are you doing today? You know, Amen. I, I've done a lot of my, my life, a lot of my career, but uh, I'm focused on where my feet are and, and, and really excited about where I'm going. Right on. Well, maybe you can tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. How did you start it? Where did you start it? You're, you're from Hawaii. Yes, sir. Born yes, sir. here? Born and raised. Born and raised. raised. Yeah, yeah. First, I mean, first of all, let me let me say thank you, Johnny. Do it for having oh me on, on the absolute Oh my God, you're hour, crazy. You're this crazy. Is, uh, this is amazing, man. I love the vibe, love the set. And um, who am I? And I'm Chad Owens, born and raised in Hawaii. Uh, you know, I, I came up in, in the the Valley of Kalihi. You know, yeah. um, and then eventually moved to Po'o Valley where I met all my friends, where I met my wife. And, you know, uh, the story and the journey goes on from that point. Went on to Roosevelt High School, uh, had a you know pretty good high school career uh, for the most part. Played football, basketball, baseball, ran some track and eventually, you know, walked on to the University of Hawaii where, you know, the, I guess the rest is history, as they say. Earned my scholarship. But uh, wait, so how I, I when I read about you, I heard that you were good in everything. You were good at track, you were good at football, you were good at this. So yeah. how how did you end up being a football player at UH Manoa? I think football is what I excelled at the most. I was okay. good at everything. Like I consider myself well-rounded, a well-rounded athlete. Um, and, and not just in like your typical sports, like I'm hey ping pong, pool, darts, bowling. <laughs> Like literally, do you think you're a competitive person? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little competitive. I might be the most competitive person you will ever meet in your entire life. But uh, you know what? It, but that's just. I think that comes from my come up. My and I come up meaning, for the most part, um, you know, my mom, you know, raised me just her. Um, I was the only child for a long time. I was always undersized, so I always felt like I had something to prove. I always felt like. I needed to to prove that I could be in this in this group or on this team or at this level, and I think that that was a benefit to me. That that, that instilled the 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 relentless mindset and and hard work to really go after um, whatever it is you want to do. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. And do yeah. you think did you get all that? Did you get all that from home, like from your mom, like the work ethics and everything, or did it come like you know that was expected from you? in school, in Roosevelt or whatever, and then afterwards in university? Yeah, and you know, I, I think growing up, uh, sports has been part of my family. You know, I had, a, I had cousins that played that obviously were older than me, and you know, obviously I looked up to them and wanted to be like them, wanted to play at the Aloha Stadium, wanted to play in the big gyms, the high school, like the state championships. You know, I grew up kind of like seeing that energy and wanted to, to, to be a part of that. Uh, and here's a pretty cool story. I went on a trip with one of my best friends, uh, you know, growing up, uh, shot him out, J- Jacob Ho'opai and, and his family, Anthony Nadine, and um, we went to San Francisco. And we were in, you know, th- that stadium there. And I was like, Anthony, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be playing here one day. You, know, you knew it right at away. At this stage. Yeah, I don't know, I was in, what, middle school? I, I, you know, I, and that's you know, so I was just sick. like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, you know, it's a good, that's a good dream, Chad. You know, but at the time, no one's like, it's like, oh, he's just a little kid. Like he's, everyone's gonna say that. Um, but I actually believed that I was gonna be one of two things when I was growing up. 
I wanted to be a professional athlete or I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be the superhero saving the day. I wanted to be the soldier that came in and with that no fear and, and, and came and, and saved everyone and, and you know, happy. And like, that was my goal. So um, very driven from a young age. Uh, and, yeah, fortunate enough to to check off one of those boxes. So you get to um, UH you're on the team how does it feel how does it feel the first game i mean you're on the you're Man. on the field and everybody's screaming and you're like you waited for this your whole life yeah listen you ever you watch the movie uh the program the football movie the program no. not sure if you go check it out so you can kind of know what i'm feeling in that movie there's a scene where he comes out of the tunnel um very first college game big time he comes out and it's just like the stands, the crowd, and then one of the teammates, the guys that have been there before, is like, man, it's big enough for you? Let's go. And it's just like, okay. So, so that's kind of, that's the feeling that I had running out of the, the stadium for the first time, especially I'm at home, playing in front of my friends and family. You know, mind you, I had to walk on, right? I didn't earn a scholarship coming out of high school. So even just being there was, it was a great feeling, but for me, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? I, I, I knew I belonged there, and I just needed an opportunity to prove, to prove that. And it came in my, my the next year. My I redshirted my first year, and so the next year under you know Coach June Jones, I was with Timmy Chang, and you know so the next year, uh, I can't remember exactly what game of the season it was, but uh, we weren't having a good game. Didn't have a spark. Didn't have much energy going. And at halftime, we're playing Fresno State, who University of Hawaii opens <laughs> with Fresno State this week. Uh, special teams coach, you know, Coach Tyson comes into the locker room storming. He comes up to me, CO, you're returning the, the, the second half kickoff and storms off. And, and I'm just like, this is... This is my this is my chance. Wait, he cost you a CO. That, that was CO, your name. yeah, Chad. So that, CO, you you return the second half kickoff and runs off, and all the other like other walk ons, other guys said, like, "Oh, CO, man, but this is it. This is your shot, man." And I'm like, man, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm just okay. 18, 19, how old? Man, I was I was nineteen. Nineteen, okay. And I took it. So again, went out second half. I go back to for the kickoff return, and I go about seventy. And that the safety just angled me out on the return. If it wasn't for that, I, I would have been to the house on my very first touch in college. And ever since then, like I, I was I was the guy. I was the return guy. And then slowly started incorporating me in an offense. So I uh, I scored. Here's a here's a pretty cool stat. Um, a lot of people may not know. My very first rush, right? I scored a touchdown. My very first reception was a touchdown. So if I took that kickoff return to the house, it would have been a first return yeah. would have been a touchdown. First rush would have been a touchdown. First reception would have been a touchdown. So uh, I'll take the two out of the three. And, I think and from that point enough. on, man, like it just, things took off, man. It's, it's such a blessing. So do you think that the confidence of that specific game, the fact that you came out on top, that gave you the confidence to exactly. continue and strive? and Exactly. Football and sports in general, a career could be determined over one play. One play. Because in sports, it's all about confidence. And since then, they call you the Mighty Mouse. Yeah, yeah, that was from high school, um, and yeah, I, I got to I got to fly that that day, and I kept I kept uh, flying. Who's so. the one that came up with that name? What's his name? I like to know that. Look, person. man, this is a this is a funny story. Yeah, um, hear in that. high school, yeah. Michael Padua. Okay, right. I do. Yeah. My ex girlfriend, I dated before I married my wife. Her name was Nancy Padua. <laughs> It's I'm wondering if they're related. No, 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 wait, no, wait, wait, no. I met her at Fresno State. <laughs> I so, graduated out of Fresno State. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so like, Michael Padua, he used to call me that Mighty Mouse, Mighty Mouse. And at the time, I took offense to it. I, was, I, was, I actually got upset. I was like, bro, what do you Why mean? Why I love Mighty because, Mouse? Because, because, again, I was an undersized guy. So he was calling me small. Like, I'm small, you know? Why can't I be, like, another superhero? I can't, you know? So I took offense to it at first. And then eventually started growing on me. And I okay. think it fits and then, and, then, and then I got I got it tattooed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and then I heard about just, that. It went on from that point. So yeah, shout out to Padua, man. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I actually when I when I watched some of your highlights, I watched a uh, five minutes uh, of your highlights. I don't know why, man. You freaking mighty mouse. You fast. You strong. And I saw you like. Pfft, you're mighty mouse, man. That's yeah, so the real life. Yeah. Tell you. <laughs> t- tell your boy. That's a good one. Yeah, no, it, it really is, man. And 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 again, sometimes 
you know, in life, things things happen when you don't expect them to. Um, the thing that you dislike the most ends up being the thing that you love yeah. the most, and it's it, it change, it's life changing. So, you know, take 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 life with a grain of salt, man, one day at a time, and just sort of like enjoy uh, every moment, every opportunity, especially today, right? Like like all the stuff that's going on. I think that's one thing that has taught us is. You know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So today is going to be my best day that I've ever lived, right? Amen. And then meet people, love on people, um, you know, and just just spread more positivity. Be more happy. You know what I mean? Smile more. A simple smile can change uh, someone's someone's day. And sorry, I, I like to talk, man. I like to ramble, as you can see. I know we're going to be going back and forth. Keep but, going, dude. <laughs> keep but look, going, man. Chat, chat, CO, keep going. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Go, so go, good right go, now. You don't even Take wrong. it to the house, man. Take it to the house. <laughs> yeah, CO, we're not saying shit. So you're flowing. You're it's good it. as yeah, shit. Man. Keep going, man. So I was go. golfing a couple weeks ago, and I was with my, you know, uh, a few of my buddies. Shout out to Daniel from Young's Fish Market, my boy Jack Abudo from Barefoot League. I was out with them. And, uh, oh, another one of my boys, uh, Isaac, um, you know, so another group drove up as we were making the turn, right? We were getting some snacks over there. Another group t- pulled up, Chad Owens, man, wow, hey. And I said, hello. I said, hey, hope you guys are having a good round, man. Enjoy. Smiling, just, you know, just being, giving aloha. Yeah. And I didn't hear it, but my boy Isaac told me after he said, bro, I, I, I overheard one of the guys. He said, man, that just made my day. So, you know, the simple fact that saying hello, giving aloha, showing that you care, it, it just goes on. That made someone's day. You know, you don't know how someone's day is going. And a, a little smile, a little aloha can change that. And because and, and sometimes, a lot of times, can save someone's life. So, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I have a, 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 a passion for motivating and inspiring, hence my my brand it's is Kalihi. Kalihi. I'm bringing, bro. <laughs> you're you're, you're the right person me? to yeah, do it, man. Yeah. You're the right Excel person. Excel inspiration to do it. is my tagline for my brand, right? CO2. So, wow, wait, wait, wait. What, that's good. Wait, wait, let me. CO2. The tagline is Exhale inspiration. We exhale carbon dioxide, right? CO2. Chad Owens number two. CO2 became sort of my thing. That's my brand. Exhale inspiration. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, yeah, that's, I, I, that's, that's, that's a fire that's for you. A that, that is some right fire there. for you. <laughs> that's yeah. a mic drop right I, there. I, I, like I swear, for the last I don't know how many minutes we're on. So I'm, just you I, to know, I, yeah. when, when I came to Hawaii, uh, a very wise and old um, wise man told me, "Live aloha or leave," and I'm like, "Oh, that's strong, strong." If you want to live here, okay, so you got to show love, you got to show respect, you got to show appreciation, you got to smile. And things go better. I come from the Middle East. We don't smile necessarily. Unless you're family, you know, we hug you, whatever. Right. But to come to Hawaii and see that people actually practice what they preach, I'm like blown away. See you giving that guy a good feeling or see you, you know, active as you are and uh, help the community. I saw you involved in so many nonprofits and opioids uh, advertisements against opioids and yep. all kinds of stuff I mean you're so involved you're so you know you care so much yeah, it's it's really inspiring yeah I, that that's what needs to be done yeah and, and, and you're right it needs to be done and I've gotten asked uh, a lot of t- in times like man how how, how how are you so successful and this is more so probably in Toronto and Canada like what what makes you so successful like you know even when you talk when you get interviewed when you you know, everything you do is just like, it seems so positive. And I said, man, it's, it's aloha. It's where I was raised. It's how I was brought up. It's, it's, it's in your DNA. It's what it is. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people love it. That's why you stayed here. Yeah. Right. You 100%. didn't want to leave. So you had to live it. Yeah. And now you understand it. And now you, now you give it. 100%. Right. So, um, that's just what I, I take. That's what I lead with. Um, actually one of my motivational talks is aloha it's an acronym i've broken that up into five different things and i talk about a l o h a and you know and that's kind of you know aloha is power aloha is mana aloha is life sacred aloha is love aloha is love yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? so uh, just to get back to so you're playing it uh, i'm sorry guys but just to um make a long story longer um 
you are playing at Hawaii and you need to leave Hawaii, where was the, which? Jacksonville. So Jacksonville. They so you have me. to leave Hawaii, family, everything behind, you gotta go to Jacksonville. How does it feel? You know what? Uh, at the time, I was, I was a young father, right? I, I had my son. You had Chad Jr. Yep. Okay. Yep. Had Chad Jr. Um, How old was he back then? He was 2003, so he was two. Okay. Yeah. Hawaii yeah. to the mainland. Here we yeah, go. No, wait. 2000. Sorry, bro. My, my, this is where the wives are good at. Yeah. He's, he's 17. So, yeah, 2003. I'm correct. Got, he's, got, he's back there. He's got, back there got, laughing right now. Um, yeah. So, so you know, young family, right? And it, 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 it wasn't hard because that was the dream. Yeah. That was a dream, man. I got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. To, to the NFL when most didn't think that was even possible. Yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, so it, there's no hesitation there. There's no, yeah. you know, it, it, this is the journey. This is where I'm supposed to be. And, and your wife was cool too to leave everything and just. Yes and no. I mean, it was probably harder for her because, you know, she's, you know, she was working, she had family. Like, I had family yeah. too, but it was just like, this was my goal. This yeah. was my yeah, mission. Yeah, she had to disconnect in order to sacrifice for right. you. It's, right. it's not that easy. Yeah, no, it's not. So, Especially, you know, to ooh, you picked Jacksonville. The right one. Yeah, the East Coast. <laughs> oh, but at least, at least, right at least climate Seattle. wise, yeah. Ooh, climate wise, it was right close. One. You know, it's warm. They it got it, they got chilly, but you know what? It, it, that's, that's just part of it. That's, that's, Part of being a professional athlete if that's your career path that's what you want to do you got to be willing to make a lot of sacrifices 100 percent. you yeah. know what i mean um you know even in the business world you know, it takes a lot of sacrifices it may not be as um a sacrifice as like having to move a lot in some businesses and some jobs yeah it requires you i, I, I think in general move. sacrifice is the name of the game it's the name of the game man. it's the name of the game it's how much you're willing to sacrifice for the dream for the goal for what you have in mind that's it it's how much you have to, yeah, that that's it that's, that's it. it so you're playing in jacksonville and then a couple of years, how many years? Yeah, well, three years in the NFL. You know, my NFL career didn't go the way I, I envisioned it to. Um, what did you envision? Man, I envisioned, you know, a 10-year-long a ten, a ten career okay. minimum, uh, pro bowls, um, you know, fin being financially stable after that, that's all said and done, leaving a legacy, and, and coming back to Hawaii, retiring, and, and enjoying life. So let me ask you you think there's a big difference between because it, in Canada in the CFL you are a huge star if that if the same would be in the NFL would it be different oh it's night and day different because you're talking about one, millions yeah, yeah millions, millions of different. dollars millions upon Mi millions of dollars <laughs> um, probably a a much bigger platform in you know when I came up 2005 you know social media wasn't like bang yeah, as yeah, it is yeah, now yeah. right so that's the difference uh, in 2010 I think Twitter and Twitter came out and I was kind of what's this Twitter thing man like ah it's cool whatever I didn't really I didn't really understand it so I I, I could have probably taken more advantage of that at that time but I was so focused on just being the best football player being the best in the league right that's that's all the focus was, right? If if I look, if if I know what I know now, back then, oh, <laughs> trust me, I'm I'm on it. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so the journey took me to this the CFL, well, even to the AFL first in the Arena League for a year, tore my ACL, you know, adversity, overcame that, and found myself in Montreal of all places in 2009 because I just wanted to play football. Like I, I could have easily retired and said, you know what, I'm, I'm done and called it quits but i wanted to play i wanted to overcome that injury and prove that i can you know come back better than than i was before and that's exactly what i did and the journey took me to the cfl ultimately me uh excuse me ultimately landing me in toronto with the toronto argonauts where you know they allowed me to be the player yeah. that i ultimately my whole dream vision mm, that i wanted to be yeah uh, an impact receiver the return game was already, a, you know, that was a given because that's what I, I did naturally. But given the opportunity to be a receiver, yeah, um, you know, because I played receiver in Hawaii, like under June Jones, I was a damn good receiver in college. You know, I believed in my skills, but you know, never got that opportunity in the NFL because of my size. You know, see the sports, sports, especially in the NFL, it's it's timing. Yeah. I, I got into the NFL in a time where 
It was about the big receiver. It was about running game. You know, today, every team has that slot receiver, that quick guy that can create yeah. instant separation, get him the ball, make one guy miss, first down, and then some. It's a different game today. So uh, that's just, I got kind of, I was in that transition. I was in the, the middle of it. You know, it didn't quite happen yet. You know, so that's that's just what it is. It wasn't, I wasn't meant to be in the NFL. Yeah. I wasn't. Because if I was, I would have been there. I would have right. stayed there. But I was meant to go to the CFL. That's about an impact. You? you know what? It used to. It used to, and I had, check this out. I had an opportunity after my first season that I played in, in the CFL in 2010. I, that was the year I was a special teams player of the year. I was the most confident that I've ever been in my professional career. The New York Jets brought me in for a workout, worked wow. out, crushed it. They they offered me a contract on the spot. So at that moment. That's big. That's huge. At though. that moment. But here's the thing. The, the NFL lockout was looming. So when they finally got back to my agent, they told him, look, we can't give you a signing bonus. Right. But in the NFL, in the NFL is the only sport that your contract's not guaranteed. Right. The only the only thing that's guaranteed is your signing bonus. So they did not give me a signing bonus, but I, I was still, I still told my agent, let's do it because I was ready. I was like, man, I'm back in the building. Being there, I was like, man, I'm back in the NFL. My dream, this is it. This is my time. And then the Argos reached out. They said, look, don't sign anything, you know? And it's hard because I was a, fa- I was a, I was a husband. I was a, uh, you were young parents and I've had struggles cr- professional wise up until that point and I needed stability. So, I, I changed, I reneged on the Jets deal, and I ended up signing back with Toronto because um, I, that, that, I needed that stability at that point in my life. Do How you, old were you then? Uh, 2010. Uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I was 28. Yeah, okay. I, I, mean, it, it, I mean, you dropped so many, like, bomb nuggets, like, the last fucking hour, how many minutes, but when you got to Canada... Would you say who is the coach to realize, oh, this guy is, is perfect for this? So when you say of all the coaches you had, was he the most influential coach or the most? I, I like to know, A, who's the most influential coach, and two, what made them so influential right. as a coach? Well, if, if I'm going to answer that question, it's, it's June Jones I, while, while, here, wow. while here at Hawaii. Wow. Um, you know, he just... That 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 co- June Jones is something special, um, and you know he is the most influential coach I've ever had. Um, What's one of, of the fa- two lessons you take away from June Jones that you know what? Holy crap! I will never ever. This is just, this is like nuggets from him. Did he change I mean, your life? One thing, obviously? one thing was that he. It's not just for me, but one of the takeaways was uh, his menta- philosophy of of one snap and clear. You know, and what, what does that mean? Well, you drop a pass or something bad happens or even something good happens. You got to forget about it because there's the next play. And if you're if you're letting that drop pass or that previous success linger, you're not focused on the current play. So that just that's so you know relatable in life. Right. You can't you can't be stuck on yesterday. You cannot be stuck on yesterday. Uh, so that 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 right there was was huge for me, and just, I mean, the fact that they believed in me, he gave me a shot, ended up giving me a scholarship, spoke volumes. You know what I mean? And and you were 19, he truly right? cares 19 about me, my family, and and what's super super dope is that late in my CFL career in 2018. June Jones was the head coach for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL. No way! And I freaking ended up there and was there for. I was on practice watch because I was still overcoming an injury, but I was there yeah. with my college coach at the pro That's level. Insane. It just it just came full circle, and now you know like uh, I'm in touch with him all the time. Uh, when he comes back, um, I can't remember when he says he's, go, he's gonna be back, but we're gonna go go golf. We're gonna like we are we're, we're tight. Like he's. He's more than a coach, you know what I mean? So, Coach June Jones, man, probably the most influential coach, one of my favorite coaches of all time. I've got a, a few other favorite coaches that I thought did a great job of coaching, uh, did a great job of 
um, relating to players, um, motivating. You know, this, I've, I've been coached. Co- John Gruden, in 2007, I was in training camp with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chucky was my coach. That dude is intense. Talking about football knowledge, like, it's such, it was such a blessing to be able to play for such a, you know, future Hall of Fame coach. And, you know, you learn so much from the different coaches that you, you play for, right? Not, not just head coaches, but positional coaches, coordinators, trainers, uh, athletic therapists. Like, there's so many people you come into contact with as an athlete. You'd be a fool not to make sure you build relationships with these people because when your career is over, like, you, you, if, you, if you didn't establish a relationship, that's it. Like, yeah. that's it, done. You never know what they're going to be doing in the future in their lives. You never know what you're going to be doing and how that could come back into play in a right. positive or negative way, right? right? So, yeah, man. So do you believe that a dream can change from dreaming of being in the NFL, realizing that being in the CFL is the actual dream? Yeah. I like that. I never put up about it. I never put it that way, but uh, I believe in that. Because it got you everything you ever wanted. In, in, in sports, yes. In sports, of course. I mean, my, I mean minus, minus financials, okay? Because I'm just going to be honest. Like, you know, we're talking about a lot of zeros in the difference here. Yeah. But oh. you take away money. Yeah. You take away salaries. Yeah. Right? The CFL gave me everything that I wanted, like she said, as an athlete. I've got lifelong friendships. Uh, I've got uh, a brotherhood that's that's so deep and the bond so tight with some of my teammates. Um, it's it's allowed me to travel. It's allowed my family to travel, see different places. Um, and how, for that, I'm how are the grateful. Canadian fans? Oh, they're great. You know, yeah. they're great. And you know, they're, 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 they're crazy. They're going crazy. Or they've got their more cities. Civilized. They've got their provinces <laughs> that are like super like heavy in it. You know, Saskatchewan, Calgary, Winnipeg. Uh, so, you know some of these problems, uh, Ottawa, but you know Toronto. It had its fan base, but it's not like the other provinces. It's not like it's just sold out every single game, you know. Um, so so for that, it's just a little different because you know Canada. They, they it's they love their hockey. They love you know some other things. And Toronto is just such a big city, man. Like they love the big the big games. They love the NBA. They love the NHL. Right. They love the their their baseball team MLB. And now their soccer team is, is massive. Toronto FC, like, they, they got crazy soccer fans. And just unfortunately, the, the Argos, uh, from a fan base, just wasn't, wasn't where it, it, it can be. I think it can get to that level of, you know, max capacity and, and, and really selling out. But that's just what it is. That's just part of the business. And, and unfortunately, Canadian football as a whole isn't, at the top of the totem pole. What do, what do you think is the difference? Why they don't make as much money as in the NFL? I don't know, man. That's, that's a qu- it's, it's, is it a sponsor thing? Well, is it, is audience, it a viewers? Right? Is it, the audience. Well, so we got big time TV deals. You know, they signed like a yeah. $50 million dollar deal with TSN. Yeah. Like TSN is the ESPN of Canada. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, where's all that money going? You, you're looking at United States, you got three and 50 million. Sometimes, sometimes a lot of time we don't realize how big big our country in size and also in population right? population right right so when you look at a Canadian market I mean it's like I'm in a different industry Chad I'm in the surf industry and skate and snowboarding and all that shit you know in my life so a lot of time we look at Canada and what I love about Canada they really uh, as a country they really protect their own businesses so they make sure that anything that comes outside of Canada you want it you can have it but you're going to pay shit low for them what I love about them I wish there there were more yeah. of that in, in our prideful. country. Yeah, Very yeah. prideful. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful country and the people. So so because of that market size, it's going to be, ex- even with TV and all that, by the end of the day, you know, your, your market size is X, Y, Z compared to 350 million people. Right? Yeah, and that's so what that's, it comes down that, to. That's what it comes down to. But but regardless, I mean, what um, A, I want to backtrack. Before you walk in this room, right, he shared with us, me and Brett, like, you know what? One of the key things I really want to know on how to be is like be motivational. And I, and like, I'm sitting here listening to you. I don't know if you noticed, I'm sitting here and going, holy fuck, holy fuck, holy shit, holy shit. Like, it's like, brah, you, you're in your lane. You got, for sure, you got to do your own podcast. I mean, it's just, I, I'm having like the most amazing time. I, I think you're so, the coach, 
they give you this mindset that the only thing that matter is the now, right? And that's why happiness, that's why everything is, right? And that's how you get to number one success, what that is. But even then, the next day, it's over and done with, yeah, man. right? So it's illusion. Could it just, right? And and I'm sorry, Chad. How old are you? I'm 38. Oh my God. I know, well, I, st- I know, I know right, I'm 28, think, 27. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? You, you look, 28, 27. Take off your shirt right now, please. The guy <laughs> looks like he's fucking 19. He's <laughs> ripped. Let, let, let me ask you a quick question. So, uh, throughout uh, the, the uh, um, you know, research that I did, I saw and I mentioned it before, in 2013, somehow, I don't know why, you decided you want to do an MMA match. Back then, you were already a successful, well-known football player. Everybody didn't understand why the hell Chad Owens goes into the <laughs> I'm octagon. I'm so glad you're going here right now. And, and yeah. a, De- a Destiny MMA, shout out to Destiny MMA. Why? Why is he going? Why is I'm he gl- doing yeah, that? I, I love telling this story. Um, I just came off of the best year of my entire career. Yeah, you were career. like on top. Yeah, records, MVP, yeah. MOP as they call it, uh, Grey Cup champion. Here's why. I I wanted I started just training. I wasn't planning on fighting. I started training MMA to challenge myself mentally because I did not want to come complacent after accomplishing all of what I just accomplished. Like I literally okay, wanted wait, wait. to you came out on your own or somebody kind of that, that was me. That was you that was me. Decided out of the blue. That was me. MMA, I, I, that's I, I needed to. Different. I needed okay. to do something yeah. different. Any jujitsu at all, or all of that. Oh. All of that. Uh, I did okay. it all. I did it all. Yeah, no, you can see actually in his fights, he actually yeah, knows know. what he's I, doing. I know. He yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Scott Junk, man. Like the best MMA coach that that I've that I've been. I mean, I haven't experienced a lot, but Scott Junk really helped me unlock you no, know you and look like you knew what you're doing even when it went to the ground yeah. even i mean the stand-up you were fantastic but when it went to the ground you knew what to do you yeah. knew how to get out of it yeah. i mean yeah how long did it take i you? didn't know it how to do it right away right it, well I, I trained literally for i believe it was three months two to three months and i, I got you. into the cage so it's over. but here's the thing I, here's what you guys gotta understand you. right <laughs> three months I'm, I'm i hate a, you uh, most i take happens. everything back i take everything back get out of here most? you make every human walking this earth insecure <laughs> insufficient no, we're not man, enough look, it, it, i it, hate it, you chad it, it, every like you could take every single football player and throw them in the octagon and have them training if they have the ability to adapt and and i learned quickly that it's such a different energy system. In football, everything's so high intense, so tight right now, explode. But it's not like that in, in, in jujitsu and in MMA because you have to pick your spots to be explosive because it's all energy. If you use the, so much energy, you're gonna gas out and that's it, it don't matter how strong you are, it don't matter how explosive you are. Yeah. Man, I was getting freaking tapped out and gassed in, in like five minutes, not even. So that was the very beginning. I ended up being able to roll, as they call it, right? Roll freely, smooth, because I, I learned how to use a different energy system. I'd go 45 minutes, no problem. And, wow. it, you know, because I had the, the, the mentality of wanting to learn, wanting to get better, making the adjustments. And that's where being a pro comes in to my advantage because I, I know how to make a, a, a quick adjustments. I can adapt. I can apply. I can listen. I can get coached and then apply. So I got so good so fast. You know, I'm a competitor. I'm used to training, preparing, and competing. That's been my cycle. So I told him, I said, look, man, I, I got to I gotta put this to the test, man. <laughs> and then they found that Destiny MMA had a fight uh, promotion coming up, and they got me in. And let me tell you. That was epic, man. That energy, it was different than I've been being at the Grey Cup coming announcements. That was fire. That was that was dope. But this bout, hearing my name coming out, the music, the crowd, it was. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because I remember that moment, man. It was insane, and they just they what a great what oh a great God. experience. Yeah, they they said, man, this place hasn't been this electric since back in the day. With some of the, the, the you know these these um, former uh, fighters, like well-known fighters, and I said, look, man, I appreciate the opportunity, and it was, uh, you know, and here's here's another side of it, right? 
I just finished the best year of my career. I didn't get a contract yet. And it's like, man, all right, so I just sacrificed so much, and I still didn't, and I played the best, uh, I was the best in the league, and I still don't have a contract? Man, maybe I need to start thinking about something else. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honest to God. So I'm like, wow. all right. I got so good so quick. I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me, let me try this. Yeah, there was worry, get injured, all that. But like, man, you can't, you can't think like that. I didn't think like that. My thought was, I'm gonna dominate, right? And that's, and I just went in it like that, and it you was did. unbelievable, man. It, it was, it was it, crazy. It, was, it was impressive. Would you do it again? You know what? I think maybe if if you know, I'm 30. I know I know there's guys that that start at a later age too. It's crazy how how they're doing it. But you know what? Right now, like my body's in a different place than it was then, as far as training goes. Um, do I enjoy training? Yeah, uh, but I'm getting into acting, so I'm training to look good, <laughs> not necessarily to perform. Yeah. You know, I've done that type of training. Oh, yeah, basically life. my whole life. Yeah, your yeah. whole life. Right? Yeah. So now it's a different time of performance. I'm training my mind a lot more. I'm absorbing so much more knowledge, listening to tons of podcasts. Oh, um, wait, and wait, stop like that. right there. Share some of that that you're listening to. That, Which one, man? Because well, I mean, your thoughts, your mind, your process is beautiful. I want to know who are those responsible parties for that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's I think everyone, man, Joe Rogan, yeah, the, that realness, yeah, right? Yeah, Just yeah, that yeah, realness yeah. and, you know, deep dive into things. Yeah. Um, you know, I, Gary V does some things that that are that yeah, are pretty he, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, no, he's different. on it. No, he's on it. He's yeah. on it. He, so, he's, he's the um, only guy that gets it right now. Yeah, my visits. boys from all Here. the smoke though are are killing the game as former athletes, Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. They, yeah, yeah. you know, they sort of help spark this interest for me because it's all about transition. What are you doing after your career? Because you have to do something. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, sit on set. And and Matt Barnes is former NBA player, uh, Golden State Warrior, you know, champion. He, you know, his brother Jason Barnes was my teammate in Toronto, so that's the connection there. And you know, through that networking, I was able to, with my buddy, business uh, buddy Nathan Elliott of Front Runner Technologies, we were able to fly to New York, meet Matt there, and sit backstage. And watch them do a podcast. They're li they're live. All the smoke, like it was fire. So just to see that the production side, the, the pre gaming, like it's just it's just like being an athlete, right? They had the, the game plan. They looked at the plays. They saw the script. They knew what they were gonna do. And then it went. Lights came on. Game time. Let's go. Boom. So just I had a mad respect for that and thankful for that opportunity to see sort of how, how it flowed. And um, you know who else? Um, you didn't do great. Because you have so many, like, I'll call them slices. You know, our life is full of slices. The slice of you growing up in Kalia Valley and, like, you, and live different. You have so much to offer. I think your show is yeah. going to be amazing. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and yeah. that's just a great thing, man. Running it back. Yeah, I mean, i got a podcast, you know, that I'm going to be starting in November. It's called Running It Back. Um, it's a sports podcast, but it's going to be more than sports guests. Because when you think about sports, right? Sports is the number one connector to everything. Music, yep. finances, yep. Um, motivation. There's so many parallels Maybe in, in the biggest in the except business religion. world. I mean, even even in religion, I, I, th I think religion plays a, a role in that. I mean, for the every single team I've been on, you say the Lord's prayer before every game in the locker room. Mm, like it's it, okay. it, it, it's in it. You know what yep, I mean? Yep. Um, you know, but but. If, just, I think, you no know, politics, we're definitely going to probably keep out because I just want to, you know, there's yeah. there's lanes that I want to stay in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's lanes that I'm just going to, you know what, I'm just, there, there's lanes for those, yeah. you know? So I'm just going to sort of stay in some lanes of sports and where those avenues lead. I can bring in a doctor, right? Someone that talks about concussions. Right. Um, I got a, a doctor here, a local doctor, um, you know, Kellen, my boy Kellen from, he, he got his uh, Instagram, uh, the, the eye Oh my God, I'm gonna mess this up. The, um, oh, the reaction doctor. Cause right he does on. a lot of reactions. I, he's an eye doctor, right? So uh, he's super dope. I'm gonna have him on the show just to talk about that. Uh, and, and I actually went and get my eyes checked last week and the, the scan that he did, you know, I saw the backside of my eye, he was explaining things. Um, and it's just super interesting. And you know, 
I'm gonna have uh, oh, I don't even want to freaking I can't spoil this, but I'm hoping to have him on the show. I was just about to drop a name. I can't drop it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I think it's in today's world too, right? This podcasting is is the thing. It's a platform uh, to motivate. Exactly what you guys are doing with this. It's 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 information. It's knowledge. Yeah. It's it's brain growth. Yeah. Right, and that's kind of that's my goal. Yeah, I think I think it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Gary V was talking about, you know, he's so good at reading trends. He's so good at kind of, you know, human behavior. You know, kind of take a look at as a society, as a country, and he's hundred percent spot on. And then I discovered him, and when he talked about, dude, the world's going to move toward audio, and I was talking about what the f is he talking about? And he was so right on course because everyone has a phone. Right, and you look at the car technology. Pretty soon, everybody's gonna say, literally, "Hey, I'm hungry. I want to get this." And you said, and, "Or everything's done for you." And that's what he's talking about. Because everything's moving toward that direction, right? And then you look at Apple, look at everything, Google, everybody's listening to you audio. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's gonna be evolution, the future. Man, yeah, and, and, evolution. No, it's, it's gonna be the future. It's not gonna be anything else because we're so freaking. Lazy, not lazy, lazy. Busy. Busy. But, 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 but the, yeah, the life that we create for ourselves in this Western type of living is so intense that, you know, I'd rather be auditory rather than sitting down and write something. And yep. that's what I'm saying. Yep. I like, I get where you're going yeah. with Gary yeah, yeah. Vee and no, Joe for sure, Rogan for sure, man. I, and I, all I, these I, amazing guys. I mean, I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan. Oh, he's a beast, huge. man. Yeah, and, and parlaying kind of what I talked about earlier about you, you you're like, I, I, I lost count already. For the amount of people that obviously were in radio and kind of understand this field, yeah, man, you got a radio voice. Yeah. So you definitely that, have a radio yeah, voice. That with the, energy the knowledge, energy. So plus, it's gonna we're gonna video it too. So we're gonna have twenty four minutes. Good looking. That doesn't hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, that doesn't hurt. He's got races in a six pack. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> CO2. Yes. Yeah. Braces in a six pack. Yeah. I'm gonna use that. Yeah. Um, you know. So we're gonna be on uh, OC sixteen. We have a twenty four minute spot on there, and then obviously all the you know podcasting platforms. So I'm, I gotta shout out my co hosts. Uh, I got my brother in law actually, Ryan Kelmaka, who's a former. Rainbow Warrior as well, uh, who also check Rainbow this out. Rainbow Warrior talking about that. He okay. was. Yeah, this is what's going on. Let Guys. me finish over this before yeah, yeah, we move yeah. on. So Ryan, me, Ryan, and Bruno Mars went to school together at Roosevelt. You know, and Ryan is and Bruno uh, best friends. So Bruno took Ryan on tour wow. as his personal assistant, trusted friend, kind of. So Ryan did that for four years, five years, I believe. And so he brings sort of like a global perspective and knowledge absolutely, wow. absolutely. And, then, uh, and then we got the lovely and beautiful Kiana Kayabia uh, is gonna be sort of like that 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 third I can you know, deal no, I mean, with the little yeah but uh, she's gonna be the one that kind of like th chimes in kind of like that 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 curveball that, yeah. that maybe that one question you know what I mean uh, so she's you know so it sounds like a sick setup yeah and I, I didn't want to cut you off but we just forgot um you know i brought you a gift and when you said rainbows i kind of you know it you Triggered. reminded me yeah um i'm a very big uh, vintage collector so i collect oh. a lot of vintage stuff i have countless storages and uh of all kinds of stuff that i collect especially hawaiian and all stuff that's amazing yeah so for you I have a vintage, legit rainbows. Wow! From back in the day. Wow. Nineteen seventy-four. Wow! You giving that to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, man, I appreciate yes, that, John. You, this is going up on my set, man. Yeah, you better my, my rundown. And this is actually going to be on the podcast. Freak you that. This is, that. This is going. So, just a little sneak peek. You know, our set is it's going to be a, a a locker room. I'm dropping it around. It's a locker room set, so I'm, I get so to cool. I get to design my locker. So. Uh, this is definitely gonna go in my log. This 1974, is going, this is, baby. Wow, this is this is epic stuff right here. I appreciate that. Right on, right on. Just to show you the love, man. Yeah, just mahalo, to show you the love. Mahalo. So, you know, just uh, another side note. You know, one of the reasons you know we were talking about 
what we're trying to achieve as far as the podcast goes and i was talking about the people that we bring on the show they're so uh motivational you know just like yourself i can listen to you the whole day you know the power you have the energy the things that you accomplish the hustle uh, um i, I was the hustle the hustle Yay! unreal unreal yeah. i was i was looking on uh, google i i googled chad owens and went to videos there's gazillion videos of you doing all kinds of stuff talking about even talking about musubis and uh, <laughs> and um <laughs> and kalua pork with cabbage yeah um i mean you're so well-rounded how can you keep it up as far as energy uh, being you know like having three kids uh, uh being a good father being being a good athlete i know that you're a, a, a personal trainer as well uh you're doing all the time you do you vlogged like there's always yeah, a video yeah. of you how man you know what i it feels like you I have was, 28 was, hours a day yeah man i i just i don't know man i i really don't know that's just me that's that's me and uh, people ask me the same question while I was playing in Toronto. Like, how are you the starting receiver, the number one receiver, catching as many balls as I caught in the game, the starting punt returner, the starting kick returner, and we did missed field goals as well. I did all of that, like, that, that is a load. Right? Yeah. So, so just so you guys, for some, so for some um, you know, knowledge here and perspective, right? You said, oh, record holder, all-purpose yards. That means rushing receiving returning right 2012 well 2010 11 and 12 2010 i went for over 3000 on purpose yards 2011 three th over 3000 all purpose yards again uh and in 2012 nearly four i had 4000 yards including the playoffs the record the record was 3800 i believe yeah, 63 3860 and and I was the first player in football history to, to 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 eclipse three in a row and to have that. So like that was over ten thousand yards in three seasons. So people are like, how are you? How can you do that? How aren't you breaking down? Like what? I said man, I train for it. I train for it, right? I train my mind for it. Um, I, my want to is more than what my body feels. You know what I mean? And you talk about the mindset. That's that's what it is. That's why. I'm able to do it because I'm not thinking about the things that I've already done in the in the week. I'm not thinking about the three meetings and the the, the video that I have to post for this. Uh, so I'm supporting this. I'm not thinking about that, what I've done throughout the day. I've done a lot today. I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about this podcast. I'm where my feet are. And... That, and I that's believe so I can powerful. Do that's a that's a very good actually. Um, you know, it's a very good uh, suggestion to yeah. everyone. Yeah, man. What, what what I'm gonna share this quote from uh, one of my big time mentors in Toronto. He's a legend, Michael Pinball Clemens. You should look him up. Uh, Say his name again. Michael Ma Pinball. Pinball. Pinball, like a pinball, because yeah, yeah. he was a former player as well. He ran like a pinball, bouncing oh, okay. everybody. <laughs> okay. He was amazing. Like the record I broke was his record. Oh, his record. Wow. And, you know, he's been my mentor, and he, he's a big-time Argonaut um, ambassador, and he's currently the general manager of the Toronto Argonauts. And he'd always come to our practices, and I just remember one practice he came to, and he said this. He said, and this is along the, along the same lines. It's June Jones, one snap and clear, mindset, be where your feet are. He said, if what you, if what you, if what you did yesterday still sounds good to you today, then you haven't done much today. <laughs> that's good wow. straight up like you can say what you did yesterday if what you did f you know two hours ago if that's still sounding good to you right now you you haven't done anything since then yeah like you gotta just keep it moving you know what I mean um, it's just like time 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 does not stop and but you were able to successfully put it into play you know a lot of people talk 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 and you know but you well, were actually literally putting it into play yeah. step by step uh, I mean you mentioned one thing right my wife uh, she plays a huge role in allowing me to, to do what I do and throughout my come up she's a great mother she handled a lot of that stuff she handled all things at home so not a lot of people have that that support system, that support system yes. right you know, someone may have to go home. They may have to do the laundry, do all this, prepare meals. They may have to do all that on their own. So it could be add to the stress level. So she definitely helps, you know, with, you know, lowering the stress level. And, you know, I try not to be stressed out in, you know, period. Just because stress is the number one cause of all these illnesses, right? 
So, you know. Are you taking any vitamins, pre-workouts, post-workouts? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a believer in, in health, nutrition, you know, taking care of my body, uh, proteins and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, daily vitamins, I got my vitamin C. I got, you know, I do vitamin D, even though we're here in Hawaii. I've been in Canada for the last number of years, so vitamin D I still take. But a supplement that I've recently added that's been a game changer for me, honestly, game changer, is collagen. Collagen. Not powdered. Yeah, My yeah. wife and I actually <coughs> have a liquid collagen that we sell and or you can say sell, promote, whatever, same thing. You can you can get it from us. It's liquid collagen. You know, we call it liquid gold, um, a young boy juice. We got all kinds of names for it. But literally, like I haven't taken a product that's given me the immediate benefits as this a liquid. Just a backstory, right? Powdered collagen. I never even knew about liquid collagen. I've only known about powder before. Your body only absorbs about 15% of that. That's it? Liquid collagen, upwards of 95 to 98%. Wow. And, you know, and our, our collagen is sort of like, uh, it's got seven patents and stuff. So it's it's really phenomenal. Like, we talk about injuries. Like, like look at that finger. Right yeah. There. See that finger? <laughs> Dislocated that. So I couldn't, I couldn't close this thing all the way, right? So I'm literally been like that but since then like honestly i have no like i can put that all yeah. the way in where I, I i couldn't do that before i've it had like, like you jiu-jitsu all your life yeah, yeah, arthritis, you arthritis, you arthritis you know yeah. joints yeah yeah skin hair growth weight loss like people are getting amazing results and to me that's what people should be focused on right now covid man look yeah up, stay your, up your healthy game yeah. right up your physical activity up your nutrition and, and spend investing in yourself, invest in your health. Yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. I, I know you told me I asked you before the podcast. I said, "Is there anything you don't want to talk about?" And you said, "No, I'm open." I said, "Is there anything that you really do want to talk about?" You said, "No, I'm open." So okay, well, let me ask you this: You smoke weed? You know what? I, I've I've dabbled in it. Um, I've sort of like I, I take CBD. You know, the the drops. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, even yeah. some of the the I THC. Just from a just for a recovery perspective, relaxed. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't smoke because it's just f for the lungs. Just for that reason, yeah. just the lungs, right? Um, but as far as the benefits of it, yeah, I'm all about it. You know, I mean, it's natural. Yeah. I'm all about it. You know, so um, I know that everyone has their views, but I think you know it's it's it's, it's known now. More and more people because are because I can see you running for government. You know, running for. <laughs> for office <laughs> no, I want to know that we're on the same page <laughs> <laughs> you know man like it's uh, yeah I'm definitely not opposed to that man it's it's amazing you know I'm not going to tell my kids to hey go ahead and you know because there's a there's a there's a time I think oh there's uh, a time and place, place when, when, when kids of course. mature and they can start yeah. to you know do I things on their own and but um, yeah I'm, I, I believe in it so before we're going to talk about uh, relationships and family and um, all of that, I wanted to ask you before we leave all the football things, I wanted to ask you, what is one thing that you can uh, tell our listeners, uh, young athletes, uh, something, tell them one thing to stay away from and tell them one thing they should adopt, they should implement in their daily routine? I mean, <coughs> honestly, young people, uh, I mean, adults, I mean, this, what I'm going to tell you right now is, is for everybody. You know, minimize your social media consumption. Wow, right? coming from you. Yeah, 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 I know. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is there's so much negativity out there as well. Yeah. Right? I, I, you know, I've trained myself mentally to be able to decipher, prioritize. And these kids, they, they don't have that prioritizing skills. They don't have that management. They, they don't know how. And maybe there's there's some out there that aren't, that, that do it. But social media consumes you. It's the, it's, the, it's the biggest addiction and drug for these kids. And for a lot of, you know, adults, they, they find themselves just getting lost in it and you're, you're, you're not being productive. It's just like, you know, as a kid, I was told, hey, get all your work done before you play video games. Cool. Get your work done. Right, but today the world is moving so fast. You can't. You really can't afford to 
okay, I did my work, and then like just just get lost on something for a couple hours because why not spend the time listening to a podcast, watching a video, learning, evolving because the world is evolving at at a much faster rate today than it than ever it, was than, it, than it's ever been. <clears throat> So 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 there's time to chill. I'm not saying you can't do that, but just be very very careful. Look, if you're going to do it, put it on the schedule. Everything today you got to live by your calendar. You got to live by that. Okay, so if you give if you give our people our an advice is like have a structure. structure. Put it in the schedule. Put it in the schedule. You want to have fun great. Put it fun from 8 to 12, but up until 8 you you fucking working, you working out, you're going, you're doing whatever. Make sure you do what you're supposed to do, you know, to in order to achieve your goal. What's your goal, right? Everyone should have goals. What's your goal? And are you doing what you need to do to achieve your goal. Are you moving towards that? If you've done that, if you've checked all of those things off for the day and you've maybe put in some extra bonus stuff or whatever, cool. Hey, enjoy. I'm not saying to be like just like a robot and just be work, work, work. No one's building, no one's trying to build, you know, robots here. But just be mindful of the time that you're spending on that because pe kids, people get lost in it, right? You end up wasting time. So, Take advantage. Here's what I tell my son all the time. Take advantage of social media. Don't let it take advantage of you. That's powerful. Yeah. That's so true. That's so mm -hmm. true. So relationship with your, um, I see you have a great relationship with your kids. Uh, it looks like it at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're close to Chad Jr.? How old, oh, yeah. is it? Well, how, how old are the kids? Two girls, one boy. One, one boy, two girls. My son, yeah. Chad Jr., is 17. Woo! Ariana is 15. And Sierra Lynn is 12. Wow. You almost got three teenagers. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Time flies, man. But I'm glad that I'm, you know, I'm, I, we had them young and we're at I'm the age I'm just thinking now. about your wife right now. She has three teenagers at home. Oh, my God. Four. Add Josh to the mix. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, but it's good, man. You know, Hawaii, we're all about family. And, oh, you yeah. know, it's, uh, it's, how it's was great. it to move back? It was crazy, man. It wasn't even part of the plan, to be honest. What? With you. What do you mean it wasn't part of the plan? Really? Man, but the plan was to stay in Toronto. That was the future. That so, was, your life, you saw your life in Toronto? Yeah. What happened that you came? Man, well, COVID hit, right? COVID, you're yeah. at home. Yeah. A lot more talking, a lot more family time, a lot more, okay, perspective, what's going on. My so wait, so COVID basically gave you the different angle for life and you decided to stay in Hawaii? Came back, yeah. I mean, wow. Well, a few other things, you know, my visa, I was there on work permits every okay. two years. Yeah, right? yeah, work yeah. visa, work yeah, visa. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a contract. 2018 was my last one. Work visa expired in 2020, uh, February. And then we applied for permanent residency. That got denied, which was surprising crazy yeah tell me about it and they were like okay what are we gonna do what are we doing what are we doing thing all sports and what the kids what's better opportunity for them <sighs> literally we made a decision three weeks later we were on a flight wow we had to sell two cars we had to sell a bunch of stuff in our house we were, we were renting at the time thankfully enough we sold our house two years ago but yeah a bunch of stuff we still have a, a, a bunch of things in Toronto at Joshua's house in their basement Th thanks <laughs> shout out to John and Liz for uh, you know housing our stuff in your basement we appreciate you um, yeah man and we're here they were happy they're excited me like I was torn because you know before the interview I asked your son how's it to be back he says I love it yeah, oh, yeah of course yeah, yeah. you're 17 <laughs> yeah. look so, around you you know it, it, for me it was, it was tough because I've built like friendships, friends that I consider family. Right. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a very like visual, right? I'm, I'm, I visualize and I commit and I just kind of like, I'm there. And so this came up and I'm like, my whole visual, my whole, everything just kind of like, I, well, I, okay, that's, it's, that's not, that's not it anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, so going back, even the NFL, NFL thinking visual, boom, CFL, right? Here I am. Toronto, Canada, future, vision, boom, back in Hawaii. But now things are starting to kind of, and here's what's crazy. We came back at a time where Hawaii was the lowest. As soon as we arrived, freaking numbers started skyrocketing. COVID, like what's going on? What is going on right now? Football season canceled, moved to the sprint. Like just things were like, oh my God. Then I'm thinking, okay, we're going to go back. Like this, nothing's happening. Like, and then 
I get connected. I get start moving. So things are going. I got the sports show. I got the podcast that's kind of there. Like things are acting. I'm, like things are coming along. Yeah. And it's like, okay. You know, I'm body water, Russian pipe, eight plus foot. You know, I'm eight feet plus. I'm feeling good in the water there. You know, weather. And, you know, right now I'm at the point where, okay, we, we, we are where we're supposed to be at this how, moment. How many, years, how many years were you gone? Full time since 2015, but I was in the CFL since, well, I got drafted in 2005. Okay, so right? you've been so gone back for like and 15 forth. years. We were going back and forth. Did yeah, all, like, Florida just, first. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, a lot has changed there. Yeah, a lot has changed. Absolutely. But, you know, you can take the boy from the island, but you can't take the island from the boy. Eee. You know what I mean? So, but it's amazing that you that you realized, oh, oh, this is now the future? Oh, this is the game plan? Okay, let's switch right, it up. Hit that's the ground the running. Game. Let's yeah. go. Okay. Make hey. it happen, right? That that's so amazing that you can be like a chameleon and just okay that's the okay let's do that then yeah. no problem. Remember you said at the beginning of the show it's all about be, be able to adapt right yeah be able Got to. to figure out and and pivot to the new thing. This this podcast basically came at least for me. I know uh, uh, Dewey has another podcast and he's doing it more um, consistent, but for me the podcast only came because. I had nothing else to do. COVID, you know, it's it. There's nothing else to do. All my four restaurants are closed. I cannot open even if I want to, because the hotels themselves are closed, and and this building is closed. So the coffee shop I have downstairs, I cannot open. Wow. Which I just changed from a a, a coffee shop into a beer garden. I invested a lot of money in there, and cannot open. So I said, what can I do to continue my path of spreading aloha, while using the power I have with my Instagram and my brand to continue to do what I like to do. And then one thing came to another and boom, here we sit with Chad Owens in a podcast four and a half weeks later. Yeah, man. And, and look, you, you touched on something there. And I think a lot of people right now, a lot of people are like, man, 2020, get over with. I want 2021. That's, that's the wrong mindset. We've got a lot of life to live left in 2020. I'm saying thank you, 2020. Yeah, COVID sucks, but COVID caused us to evolve. It 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 gave us um, a, a, an opportunity to 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 dive deeper, to learn a new skill, to 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 change, to become better. And it sucks because you know. However, governments are, are handling certain situations. You got local businesses shutting down. You got people's pockets hurting up. Like, it, it's, it sucks. Like, I'm upset about that. I feel, I'm hurt about that, you know? Um, but, you know, at the same time, people are evolving. I've got a saying as part of my brand, adversity fuels me. And you, you have to. Say that one more time, please. Adversity fuels me. Hard work defines me. Passion separates me. So that's what okay, I'm three wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, that's sorry, deep. Sorry, that's sorry, deep. Sorry, sorry, we sorry, gotta sorry, go sorry. into this. No, no, no. I want, I want, I want you to repeat it again, really slow, because I think it's something that. Yeah. So it's you know, so beautiful and powerful. I think a lot of time that people don't really take the time to really digest. Yeah. This. Yeah. So yes. I've said it. So ex Excel inspiration Adver is the brand. Adversity. Adversity fuels me. Fuels. Like okay. fuel, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, fill yeah. me up, man. I need. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. on 92 octane. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. But adversity. Oh, th 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 there's no you yeah. can't just you can't put a number in that yeah, yeah. right that's the best fuel mm. that you can get yes. all right hard work it defines me i've had to outwork everybody my entire life and i'm still doing it because that's that's what's led to my success so that's what's going to lead to my future success and ultimately the difference maker the x factor is your passion your will your yeah. ability to make sacrifices your 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 passion and love for whatever it is you're doing having intent being on a mission. I just did a, my show today and I, and I interviewed um, uh, Miss Gina Ross from uh, Fit for a Goddess, you know, uh, Pole Fitness, and she's on a mission. And I said, I love that. You don't have a goal. You don't have a, you're on a mission. A mission is a very detailed goal. So. Oh, mission is like. Details, goals man. On yeah. Passion. Yeah. Passion yeah. Is, is that detail, is that mission type mindset. And that's my three characteristic traits that, that sort of make up 
Chad Owens within my CO2 brand of XO Inspiration. Yeah. So if you had to choose one attribute or one talent or one or one thing that you had to tell the people that will make him successful, whether it's an athlete or just a random guy on the street, like what what would it be? Would it be become a lion? Become a lion. Okay, explain. I don't know if you've you ever heard the story, uh, and it's in, I think, you know, the, uh, it's in, it's in, it's in, it's in the Bible, I believe. They, they, they use lions and eagles, right? Like as yeah. the highest of, the, the, the lion is the king of its domain. Right. The eagle. On land. Is the king on air. of its domain. Yeah. Now, become a lion. Well, here's why. When a lion sees an elephant, what does the lion think? Mm, that's, I have dinner for like a week. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. Boom. Does it see the biggest animal in the world? That it, that, that thing is just going to trample no. me. No. no. Just dinner. No. And poop. -poo. What, what's, what's the elephant? <laughs> what's the elephant? Yeah. And, and leftovers, man. They're going to freeze that for... Yeah. What's the elephant think when it sees a lion? Fuck. I got to run. <laughs> I'm lunch. I'm dinner. I'm poo-poos. But... It's not thinking that I'm the biggest animal to walk this earth and I could just, I'll smash that line. It's mentality, right? The eagle is the only bird that when it sees a hurricane. So adapt the mentality of the, of the lion. Of the lion. Not and the, the eagle, but I like the lion. The eagles, they're the only ones to soar above the hurricane. Every other bird, they fly for cover. They fly for the trees, right? And the eagle soars above the hurricane and it's just cruising. So, but I like the lion because I, I feel like I, I identify more with the lion and uh, throughout my life, and that's its mentality. I had a very important question for you. Um, in the last, I, I, I'm not really um, um, knowledgeable in in NFL or football in general. I never, I didn't grow up in the United States, so I didn't play it ever. But I heard that there's a lot of concussion a lot of brain potential brain damage um how do you look at that i know that you had a product that you came up with a couple of years yeah. ago uh to kind of take 22 percent off the, the 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 impact but do you know people that actually are having concussions or have even further problems in their life oh, yeah. because of that oh yeah i mean you know ctes i think is, is probably even yeah. more yeah because, I mean, if you think about CTEs and what that is, right, that's basically every time you get you get impact, your head gets trauma. Think about a white wall, and you got your toothbrush, and you dipped it in black paint, and you went like this, and you splattered it. Yeah. It So there's a chemical that gets released, CTE, in your brain. Like, like that's CTEs over time, right? The more CTEs, the more black, 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 black on the spot. It just... So think about that, right? So CTEs, to me, I think are are more of the long-term effects. Concussions are, you know, it's, it's like a, a big concussion. It's a one-time thing, but it's, it's the long-term effects of CTE that are, that are worse. And yeah, I, I know it's there. I know the danger. I know I've had a couple in my career, probably more than a couple. Concussions. Yeah. You know, but, you know, here's the thing. You, you grew up. And I'm just glad and I'm thankful that, that the awareness is there today. Because when, when I was in Pop Warner, yeah, I used to, we used to be taught to, to right here, use that. Oh, my God. <clears throat> use that to hit someone. It was right here. And how many times, you boom, it's just like, oh, you had the ringer. Oh, yeah. just to sing stars for a little bit. I'm all good, though. Shake them off. That was a mentality. That's how you were taught. That's how we were coached. Shake that's, them how, off. that's how those coaches were coached, right? Yep. But now, it, the evidence, and thank God that it that it's was putting out there, you know. And and you look at man, Junior Seau, who was a, a legend, linebacker, Miami Dolphins, Chargers, mm. um, Patriots, but yeah. legend of Polynesian, you know, ancestry. You know, hey, he took his own life. I, to me, that was a result of. Of that, yeah, you know, uh, you know. I hope I'm not really offending anyone by making those comments, but I, I what I'm getting at is I, I cared about Junior Seau because he was someone I looked, I looked up to. Though. He was someone that the Polynesian culture yeah. looked up to as an icon. Right. I can be like him. I want to be like him. Right. 
and the result was that right over time man it just and then you know you sprinkling uh, other things like i think as an athlete maybe not getting uh you know not getting that ring you know you gotta understand to be a pro you gotta fully commit and you don't you, you if you if you if you do it just to be in the game if you do it just to make the team whatever you're in it for the wrong reasons yeah. like, you do it to be the best junior sale did it to be the best he did it to win that super bowl ring and i hate to say it but sometimes media and pressure you know makes make can make someone feel like their see their career wasn't anything unless you won a super bowl Mm. Right. Yeah. So who knows? And I'm just speaking as in like giving an opinion. Who it's knows so that, that? What are you about to say? Right who now? knows it's that so that good. that that depression, that yeah. sort of like thought process of, man, I never won a Super Bowl or this or whatever. But when you have concussion syndromes and CTEs and like, the depression affects you more because your brain's not you know it affects you more. So I believe if Junior Seau didn't have as many concussions or there was because he was a tough SOB, right? How many ringers I'm sure he's gotten and came back oh, in the yeah. game, shaking up and came back in and get another ring again. He's a, he was a linebacker. He, he's smashing people all day. If if the knowledge and the awareness was put forth and the protocols was there when he played, I don't think the result of what you know we, I said, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't because he's, he he was taken care of that much better, and that's why it's just like it's 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 hurtful. It's upsetting that, you know, someone and he's not the only one. Other people has has been in that situation, and the results were unfortunate because of the lack of awareness and 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 what it was before. But look, I don't want to I don't want to beat that up too much. But I just wanted to share that and and you know rest in peace. You know, Junior, uh, love to the family. Um, it's just unfortunate. Concussions are real. It's part of the game. It's part of a lot of. Do sports. you let your son play football? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a quarterback. <laughs> um, you know, and he's also a baseball player. Yes, you know, I know the I know the risks. I know all of those things. Um, what, 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 and I what still do you haven't tell? watched the movie Concussion with Will Smith. Yeah. yeah, I haven't watched that because I know, like, I don't. And I, everyone tells me, "Oh, that movie." Yes. Yeah. While well, you watch that, you're not going to let your kids play play contact sports. No way. And I'm just like, I just. I'm not going to handcuff my kids. You know, I'm not going to take away a passion because, you know, of what potentially could happen. I know the risks. He knows the risks. Uh, he's not a lineman. He's not a running back. He's not a linebacker. He's, not, he's a quarterback that, you know, hopefully doesn't get hit much and can slide, can has other things. You know, he's he's not coming across the middle. Yeah, Boom, and just getting blown up. So, but this is but this is definitely something that you are aware of, and you talk, talk to your son about it. And absolutely. this is something that you take super seriously. And absolutely, be I said, be smart, bro. You know, you're a quarterback. If it's a championship game and you got to put your head down to get over that that goal line, oh, you do so. But be smart. Every other, hey, you got to be smart. Slide yeah, you gotta choose your battles. You got to pick your battles exactly. Yeah pick your battles and sometimes the competitor in us all yeah the lion in us all takes every opportunity to impose and to show that i'm a lion but even you know and, and again lions aren't the smartest animals they are what they are that is so true though they yeah. are what they are you know i've seen the lion like going after a freaking alligator trying to pull it out of the water so, i mean get out of there like you, you get dragged and you're done right like like they you're don't land guy. they don't yeah, see you're it. Not water you guy. know what i mean so you know it's just it's just picking and choosing battles being smart and you know again i'm thankful that the awareness is out there um you know i gotta ask two questions can i this I'm going to take you there because at the beginning of the conversation, when you share about who you are, your upbringing, um, I hear nothing but a single mom, really, like instrumentally. And here you are as a young child. Brother and sister, how many? Well, after when I think when I was, uh, man, was it nine, ten? Yeah. First yeah. ten years of my life, I yeah. was pretty much, you know, the only child. on my own. And then, like, I got my stepfather, and then yeah. I got you know, a brother and a sister right. after that. But up until that point, yeah. I was an only child right you know seeing my mom grind every day 
And I think back at now, I'll share this quickly before you get into your question. No, no, no. Unless the question is no, about no, no, moms. It, yeah, yeah, actually no, it is. Yeah, so yeah. maybe I'm gonna answer your question <laughs> before you even ask it. Yeah. You know, I grew up in Kali in a single, uh, it wasn't even one bedroom, it was a studio. And all I remember eating was cereal, Simon, and uh, yeah, I mean, cereal, Simon, and, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. like. But that's all I knew. That's all I didn't think that I was poor. Yeah. But I think back on it now. I said, "Man, like my we mom was poor. working all the time just to put food on the table, and that's that was the cheap. You know, if you make a sacrifice, you know, you're gonna you're gonna go cheaper on the food because it's still f- food. Yeah. yeah. But because you gotta pay bills, you gotta yeah. put gas, you know, all these things, right? So, yeah, cereal. Yeah. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Sign me in. That was all day easy. Let's go. Cracked it up. Let's, let's, let's put it together. But maybe that's why you have such a good body today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe right. that's the secret. Yeah, right. <laughs> you heard it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little hour, man. I, I gave too. out the golden nugget, man. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly and... Uh, Top ramen, sign me in. And, 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 and stale. <laughs> oh, my God. And cereal. Yeah. Right so, on. So... Did you feel like you had a father figure? Because I, I didn't have this clear picture that you have a really strong role male mo- role model. I, I didn't get that at all, you know? You know what? I don't know if you, you connect with your stepdad. Growing up, you know? growing up, you know, I had a, I've always had a relationship with my dad. I have a, a, a good relationship with my dad today. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like, you know, I'm with him every day. Yeah, you're 38 well, now, so day. I'm talking as a, as a yeah. good, good shape. But but a father figure, yeah, I missed that a little bit. My stepdad came in, he was he was that figure. But yeah. I knew he was just a stepdad. He right. knew he was just a stepdad. So right. he only, he never crossed that line. Right. And, and I kind of wish that he did. Right. Right, he never put his hand on me. He never really disciplined me. He, yeah. ne- he just, he was just... Yeah. Respectful, right? That I, I he Sounds wasn't like my a dad. Great guy. Yeah, and just you know, but I even with that, like, never really had that father, like, yeah, you know. So, so, so the second I had part uncles. Of, I have my uncle. Yeah, my, that's my always cousin, the second part. My question, older cousin yeah. was you know Danny, who was that athlete, and I was always hanging out with him. I always wanted to go to their house, and I've got a bunch of aunties. You know, my my, my grandma, rest in peace, Nana. Uh, and Papa, you know, my Uncle Chuck was the only, only boy. My mom, my Auntie Cheryl, Auntie Shalene, Auntie Charlotte. Four girls, one boy. So my uncle was kind of that, 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 that guy in the family, right? That, you know, favorite uncle, <laughs> only uncle, but favorite <laughs> uncle, you know, father figure-like. And, mm. you know, it's... Um, that was it. So, so kind of so missing... He, what's his name? Uncle Chuck. Uncle yeah, Chuck. Charles, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. Junior. My yeah. Papa is Charles, but... Yeah. You know, just, but still, that's still, that's uncle. You know what I mean? Like, you have the figure, but it's different. Yeah. Right? So, I guess that that's why, and I've thought about this too, I've kind of, I have a lot of, what's the best way I can put this? I have my belief systems. I feel like I have to control everything because that's, I felt like I was not on my own, but I kind of was in control of my own for a long time. Yeah. I didn't have, like, mom was working, like, you know, I didn't yeah. really have anyone, yeah. you know, controlling me. Yeah, you were growing up at age 10. So Sadly, I, I yeah, to, like, it yeah. is. Yeah, you were growing up at age 10. Yeah. You, you grew up at age 10. You didn't have a childhood, really, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, like, even today, like, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but me and my mom was like this, right? Yeah. Super tight. And when I went on to college, I mean, sorry, when I went on to the pros, you know, they came with me to Jacksonville. My mom, my stepdad, my brother and sister. Oh, you brought the whole family? I brought everybody, man. Wow. But, you know, one of that's one of my regrets, and, and I'm going to say this now because it, it is what it is, you know, that get, that put a lot of pressure on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I got to take care of all of this. Yeah. So that sort of took my, my focus Away, away from the football, yeah. away from that, and that's why I ended up, you know, being out of the NFL after a couple of years because I was focused on yeah. finances, bills, and like just, just it was heavy. Yeah, and you know. So if there's one thing that you could have changed, would it be? To it leave? would have been to to have my mom and stepdad stay, stay here, home, stay and here you home, go with my family and yeah. just smaller, and you know, and my mom them still ain't back. 
they're not back and and so oh, they still live they're they're in oregon Florida? oregon right oh. now but you know from a relationship i said me and my mom wanted this now it's sort of been like this yeah you know for for years and yeah. it kills me sometimes because yeah. there's nothing i can do right now I, I don't have i can't bring them back they're doing their thing right. it's it just yeah it's tough and so for me and this is something that i don't share i haven't shared with a lot of people but you know not having that that it's like i've like i didn't have parents for a long time right you know i didn't like I didn't sit and have that access to mom and that love because at the end of the day, man, I'm a mama's boy. You know what I mean? You always want love from mom. You're going to go over and just feel that love from mom. You know what I mean? I, I, I haven't had that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I guess it changed sort of my, the way I guess I parent. Yes, um, that's always been that question. The I'm, second I'm, question I'm, was I'm, how does I'm that more, shape your father, yeah. you as a father today? Um, yeah, I mean, like, how, how is that shaping you today? Like, what do you, what do you do? Yeah, be you know, I think every every father's goal should be that their son becomes a better version of themselves, right? Uh, I worded that that way. I got a so, book for you. So me, I got a book for you. When this <laughs> podcast's over, I got a book for you. All right. Yeah, yeah. So me, I tell my son, look. Don't and he doesn't. He, he's not pressured at all because he knows that he's he he's he is who he is. Right. He's not gonna. He's not trying to be me. I don't want him to be me, right? I want him to be. You know, maybe the, the better version of me. Be be what you are, and t but take what I've done, and and let that assist you, right? Um, and with my wife, I think that that's uh, it helps. It helps my kids grow up in in a household where you know it's both parents and that's it's that's that's already a different scenario than i was in right but you know hey I, i'm i'm doing what my best job is as a, as a father and as a husband and i can't because of this what it is but i didn't get to see a father and a mom my, my right. mom and my dad yeah you don't have a good like role model a lot you don't know what time. that looks like yeah. So not that there weren't there were bad people. Yeah, you just don't know I, it. I, that, that was just me. There's yeah. a lot of people out there who grew up without any parents. Right. Their grandparents raised them. Right. Uh, which isn't bad. Sometimes that's the best things that happen to kids. Absolutely. You know, but for me, that's that's what it is, and you know, that's why I I sort of like pour everything into my kids. They they, you know, they've I've we've given them. And I keep saying I. My wife and I have given them probably a lot more than than what we you know got as, as, as kids not saying again not saying that our parents didn't do a good job it's just it is what it is we you always want to try to provide more for your kids than what you had right and i wouldn't tra trade my childhood i'm out bringing for anything it shaped me to be the person i am today yeah right but uh that's just the natural effects my son my daughters that they're going to do the same for their kids try to provide more try to you know and that's that's just how it is. But um, are you a patient, a patient parent at home? No, I'm not. I, I and I'm not. You it's know, my, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm it's a, my same. It's the same I'm problem. I'm a 14 mm. year, you know, pro, 14, 15 year professional athlete. Wait, how old are you? 37. How old are you? 38. Yeah, the same age. Sorry, men, we're retards. I'm telling you, until like late 40, patient. We don't learn about patient too much later in our life in our 40. You're type A, you're type A, you both came from the same mold, this driven, yeah. when you have, the, you know, and oh my God, you found your passion early on, nothing just driven you to where you are today, right? Yeah. Same goes for you, you know, so, so hell no, you're personally top patient, it's not the game. But Same it's coming. Year. Do we? It's coming. Like that's that, sort that's of that's the that's hardest the thing that, though to do. To, to Chad, I'm 56, dude. I just learned patient. I think last year, maybe. <laughs> that's my. No, no, no. That's my. <laughs> no, no. I'm serious. I'm not joking. <laughs> Jeff and I were talking about today. We spent yesterday. Wow. My, my business partner. We sit in the night. He's in, he lives in the mainland. He come visit me with his newborn and haven't seen the newborn. And we sat on the night. And I go, Jeff. And this is like, I love the man to death. And I go, dude, I just figure out, it's like, I sent me this podcast about leaders, right? And patience is one of the most powerful things. And, and 
I told him like my my thing that I'm going through right now. I finally figure out like patient is like damn. Such but you got, but, but, but think have. about it. That comes with you're right. The age like when you are younger, you're more driven because you've got so much you're trying to do. Yeah. And 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 patience also. And what I'm learning now, right, this is what what we can try to help young people. This is the best part of the podcast. Yes, everybody's the, the, out there going to get this nuggets. Is what right right young, this is what we can do right to help young people right develop this skill earlier. They don't. They don't. It's not like oh, you wait till you're older to get more patient. No, patience is patience is a skill, right? Would you agree? Patience is a skill. Yeah, it's something that's developed. Start, yeah, and you got to practice it. Oh, hundred percent. You've got to, you know. And it's not for us when we think of patience, right? Normally, the, the, the line in us it means oh, we're moving slow. <laughs> it yeah. means it means like we gotta wait on someone. Man, I'm already yeah. over here. Like you're over there still. Come on, like yeah, let's do it. Th- th- but but patience is actually more so maybe listening better. Yeah, maybe you know uh, planning better. Maybe getting more more perspective. You know, maybe maybe being okay with maybe you know extending that deadline a little bit you know give yourself more time to perfect it uh finding creative ways to develop patience as opposed to just thinking that i'm just okay i'm sitting here waiting or you know um and again i'm speaking but i need to definitely i need to practice that more my son's probably back there like this guy's not even, he's not patient guy's, <laughs> man. And, but you know it is what it is like that's how we are that's how I've been wired you know but I'm working on myself and I think everyone needs to continue to work on themselves and again develop that skill you know patience is a skill and it's a unbelievable skill that is needed in relationships right patience trust all those things um, helps you so yeah, we need to we need to develop that a little bit better. So when we already talk about patience, and you guys moved back, which means your kids are not going to school. Right? They're probably doing Zoom. They're I'm from home. Yep. They're Zoom. You want to tell me you have patience for Zoom? Look, man. Like I, I, I'm. Look, I'm about to lose kids, it. I'm about how old are your to kids, lose. Though? Six Younger. and eight. Yeah, that's hard, man. It's hard, man. That's I'm hard. about to lose it. My, my my son's seventeen. He's getting straight A's, which is is surprising to me. But he might be a better Look who's the learner father. in this environment. No, but he wasn't. He's not a straight A student. Up until this point, being in school, he's like me. I was always the one on the grade, the, the report card. Oh, Chad's very. Um, they use the word disruptive, but we're not disruptive. We're just <laughs> ants in the pants. We're, we're active. High we wanna, energy. High energy. We want yeah. to go do something. We're not. We're not disruptive. We don't have ADHD. 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 <laughs> no, we want to go do something. So that's just him. You know, he wants to be the class clown. You know, him and his friends out there. Josh probably saying, "Yep, that's Chad." <laughs> and you know what? That that's that's what I was. And maybe it's harder for him to learn in that environment. And it might be better for some kids to learn that that environment from home. He's thriving, right? So. And again, you know, going back to my, you know, 17, 15, and twelve. What about the twelve? They log in. They, she's good. She logs in. She does her thing. Yeah, know. self-explanatory. She does this. Uh, man. I guess, you know, they're they're very, I guess, independent. Well, my son's a baby. You know, he's freaking. Everything's got to be done for him. You know, um, <laughs> so you know, it, it. They're. I think they're enjoying because it almost feels like they're enjoying part of it. But they're missing that social aspect. They're oh, missing yeah. the friends. They're missing going to school. You know, yeah. you know, just having breaks, kicking it, building those relationships. Especially because this is going to be new. Just move back, so yeah. they're looking forward to building new friends and and experiencing school in Hawaii. So I believe that they're set to what is it, December yeah, or something yeah, yeah, yeah. next month to to get going or November, December. So yeah. we'll next see. Next semester. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, how did it feel to move back? I know, like you move back, kids are back. How are they feeling? I, when I look from the from 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 you know from the sidelines, I look into your life. I feel like Hawaii accepted you so nice with so much love. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so. Uh, 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 you know, it, it it's really to appreciate that the people love their people. Yeah. The way they look at you, the way they talk about you, the opportunities they give you. It, it looks like Hawaii loves you, man. 
Yeah, you know, and I love Hawaii and I love home. And, you know, that, thankful enough, I I made an impact while playing at the University of Hawaii. Oh, yeah, you made a you huge know, impact. made an impact on, on people's lives um, through football, through sport. And, you know, I never thought, and again, you know, I'm going to share some things with you guys that I've never shared, but I, I had a worry that, that man, maybe I was, I was from too far removed been gone too long maybe that was part of what i was thinking when i was up there and i'm too far removed like man they forgot about me already you know what i mean like I, but thankfully enough i've been playing long enough and i've gotten coverage down here for my game so i was still somewhat relevant it's not like i fell off the the earth 10 yeah. years ago knowing my name so thankful enough through sport i was my name was able to stay relevant and yeah, I'm not just an athlete. Now, you know, I'm doing other things and yeah, you, you know, you nailed it. Truly thankful that Hawaii is Hawaii and that's aloha and and they, they, they didn't forget and that's the one thing I'm thankful for is that I feel that love. Yeah. And now I'm I'm like I feel like I never left and it's it's amazing. I, that's why I wake up every day, man, with a smile on my face because number 1, it's it's October 21st and it's 80 degrees outside. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Toronto, from Canada, it's, yeah. Woo, it's cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's number one. Um, you know, kids are healthy. Everyone's healthy in the midst of this pandemic. So it, it's, there's a lot of reasons to, to wake up with a smile on your face. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to each day. That's that's amazing. It, it's, it's really inspiring to see how you came back, the way they respect you, um, the relationship that you have to the community is uh really inspiring yeah. really something to 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 look up to is there anything special that you're involved in right now any special project any non-profit organization any program yeah you know i'm you know you follow my social media you know I've, i push out um one oahu uh is they're they're really pushing the whole social distancing and campaigning for yeah. hey farther is better uh, so quieter is you know better because when you talk loud you project yeah um just that whole campaign to help decrease the spread because at the end of the day yeah it's gonna affect our kupuna the older and you know even some of the the the, the kids the babies right so we we're just trying to do our part and i'm supporting that movement as well as uh whole Allah, who is partner with the texaco gas stations in hawaii who uh locally owned and operated and they you know, for every gallon that you spend at Texaco, that, you know, uh, a percentage goes towards um, programs and developing w more ways to lower emissions. Uh, so that's a huge support for me because we want to keep Hawaii, Hawaii. We want to keep Hawaii beautiful. And, you know, lowering emissions ha helps with that. So those are two movements that I'm helping push are right now. Are you driving now. the Tesla? Tesla? <laughs> hey, I've ridden in a Tesla, and that thing is that thing is sick. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, I wish I could get one. Yeah. Uh, maybe one day. But you know what? For now, I'm pumping gas, and I'm going to Texaco. <laughs> I'm going to Texaco, Hawaii, man. I'm going to Texaco. And look, I'm I'm, Texaco I, I, only, I only fill up at pump number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if the pump number two is, is isn't available, and you there's the, all the other, I wait. I wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, pulling, I'm behind him. You know, one time, but it was like, hey, there's, you know, those are open. Oh, no, I, I want number two. Yeah. You only <laughs> get gas at CO2. number two. CO2. CO2. Okay, so uh, we're getting uh, pretty uh, close to... Um, Let's wrap this up. To, Let's to, give them the five to questions. The end. Yeah, for sure. Um, any, any advice you have for retired athletes before we... Retired athletes, current retired athletes. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add another part to that, Johnny. So for my current retired athletes, you know, I... I, I recommend reaching out to your entire network. network everyone that you've come into contact with throughout your career that you know that you've made an impact for or better yet that you've done favors for you've helped them out look the favors come back things come back reach out right if you're in a place of you're stuck i don't know what to do look there's someone out there that wants to help you that remembers what you did for them so reach out network man uh, reach out to me if you want to, man. Hit me up on IG, man, at Chad Owens, too. Um, that's my advice to them. And you know what? Find that secondary passion if you haven't already. You know, there's so many things that, that we could do. 
And the best thing I think as athletes that we can do is pay it forward. Give back that knowledge. Give back that 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 skills, those the ten thousand hours that you put in to become great at what you've done. Give that back. You know, and and, 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 and it's hard because a lot of times you want to get paid for it. Yeah. I get that, man. If times are tough, if that's what you want to do, go ahead, charge and, and train people. Give them some knowledge, you know. Uh, but if not, if finances isn't the thing, man, give that thing back for free. We can't take that with us, right? And for the young people along those lines, you know, current players, aspiring athletes, look, make sure you have that secondary vehicle. Make sure you have that thing that, that you're building while on, on your, your path to being a professional athlete. You need to have that secondary vehicle mm. so that when you're done, man, all you're doing, check this out. All you're doing is changing the frame. The, mm. the engine's still yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah. That engine is yeah. you. You're the engine, right? You are the engine. Make sure you got that other frame building so when time comes, you pop that thing on and you can keep moving. Okay. So good. To okay. our listeners, I mean, you heard uh, so much valuable information, so many uh, great shit. things. Yeah, good shit. Good shit. Um, good we're going to get to our... Uh, to wait, our wait, wait. Before we start, that we should allow Chad to ask any question of us before we end the show. He has five questions, and uh, he drill you with the five, and that's how we end it. But before we do that, we want to make sure we give you the opportunity to ask anything. Anything goes for me, and I'm sure. Man, goes wow, that's the spot. If, if, I, I didn't even not, think about. It. I didn't even not, know I was going to ask you guys yeah, a question. If not, he's going to drill you with the fire. Um, <laughs> whew. Whew. let me see. Look. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> Dewey, Dewey, <laughs> look, yes, man, sir. Dewey. Yes, sir. For you. Yes, sir. Um, we gotta, we we, we gotta do something in, in, in the surf game. You know, we gotta. You know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking you, not not for a question. It's more of a, a favor, man. Let's yeah. let's 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 dive into that. I'm, I'm addicted to the ocean. Okay. So I'm like, before I got here, my wife got off work. She's the nurse. She got off at twelve thirty, and we we basically we grab like we in the ocean. So we went out and and went for a quick swim and snorkel. Brett. Ulua about the size of this table. And I'm going to post it because people won't believe me. There's two giant Ulua. Which I was swimming with them. And every chance I get, the same swell you caught pipe, I, my ball is not as big as you because I'm not a fucking <laughs> football player. I was at another spot with me and two other guys. It Where? was like, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take you though. That's my question. Yeah, I'll take you. Are you what? goofy regular foot? You're a sponger, so what? It's a, I'm a goofy foot. It's a laugh, and it's okay. yeah. It's just wow. me and him. That's beautiful. Yeah, and, Secret and spot. yeah. So I'm in like I'm in. That's my home. That's my first addiction. My first passion was surfing. Second is jujitsu. So yeah. Wow. So yeah. Well, so, you got to take me to the spot. Yeah, yeah, You ain't got to tell the people. You got to take me to the secret spot. Yeah, no, 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 pipe pipe is left. No, I pipe can't. is left. So I can go left. Yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I came here at age 22. Got out to pipe. I was barely four foot, and I got beat up so bad. I haven't came back and surf pipe. I'm 56. So let's tell you. That's wow. That place kicked my I didn't my know ass. that story. No, no, no. I mean, I told you, Seth Moniz was here. I told him the story. Wow. I, go, I mean, it, it, I always look at this is nuts. Yeah. It's a different I, beast. I, I mean, I, I surf. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah. Should take, you should take him surf. Yeah, but, but the way I go now, Chad, it's like. Yeah, I'm, again, patient, like peace, calm. Yeah, I, want so enjoy, sm- I want more serenity. I want more serenity. I want more quiet. I want more peace. I want more. Yes. Yeah. That's just. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's so good. Yeah, you're, you're 38. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just to make sure that all our listeners understand. So, uh, 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 Chad, a couple of days ago, posted on his Instagram, on his social media, that he was bodyboarding in a huge day at Pipeline and it's maybe his second time out at Pipeline. <laughs> it was beyond, it I was hate huge. Him. I hate you him, che- I don't like him. You gotta check out Screw his Instagram yeah, he makes at everybody Chad look like Owens. Shit. Two. Two, check it out, you'll see the picture, you'll see the wave. This guy is nuts. <laughs> uh, and, and now we're gonna get to our five questions. Uh, it's a what would you rather question, are you ready? Yeah. What would you rather, have 50% of a watermelon or 100% of a grape? 
50% of a watermelon. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> Man, give me that juice. <laughs> Would you uh, rather teleport yourself back in time or to the future? Wow. Oh. Knowing what I know now, take me to the future yeah. so I can better prepare. Yeah. All right. I knew it, I knew it. What would you rather, fulfill your biggest wish or resolve your biggest regret? Fulfill my biggest wish, for sure. Right on. And um, number four, what would you rather, have a sports stadium named after you or have a university named after you? Well, uh, I'm going to go at university. All right. Wow. And last but not least, what would you rather, be a ninja or a pirate? Hmm. I'm going to go with a ninja, man. I love I'm gonna this go with a ninja. guy. All right. And, and uh, last but not least, uh, oh, a lot of friends, a lot of fans actually uh, hit us up on uh, social media. And the one question that came up all the time is, does Chad Owens play fantasy football i didn't want to ask you that question but the but the people at home they wanted to know it do you play fantasy football you know what i was never really a big fantasy guy but this year i'm <sighs> playing yeah because my son he, he created a league he's the he's the he's the ceo out there he's the commissioner so uh he got me going in a league and and i I, I honestly I still don't even know how it works, man. I I just pick my players, uh, and look, it, it's fun, it's cool. I could never play while playing. I guess I just sort of had like a weird feeling to do so. So you know what? I'm done playing now, so I can uh, I can enjoy being a fan okay. and uh, you know rooting for players and, and and getting into the fantasy game. Right I got on. one last question. Yes, sir. I know you do your five. I, I have one. Um, what do you think? You're 38 easiest lesson in life that everybody has whatever advise you whatever teach you taught you from home from family easiest lesson that you go oh i mastered this lesson what, what, what would that be you think man, 38 years of your life man one day at a time man okay good second part of that question will be can i can i can i yes 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 i'm just gonna go sports terms okay. right one play at a time Right, because you have a full game, you have a full day, but but you scale everything back to one play. Right, yeah. going back to be where your feet are, like one play at a time. Yeah. Do we one play at a time? So beautiful. It's not even funny. I, I swear, everybody who's listening, if you can live your life in the present moment, that's wow. that's the secret, the, man. Yeah, yeah, isn't that's it? That's the secret. The hardest thing ever, right? The hardest, hardest thing, thing do, ever. Man. Yeah, with monkey mind. Um, second part of that question would be. What is that one lesson that took you so long to master and you haven't mastered it yet and you're still working on it? Or you master it but it took you this long, 38 years old. Oh, fuck, finally, I figured this out. Well, what's the hardest lesson? Man, um, I, I think probably being a you know mentality, a lion, right? A man. I think the thing that I've lived my whole life believing was that men are just tough. That's it. That's it. Tough. But I found, and, and I'm, I'm kind of spinning. It's not necessarily a lesson. It's That's sort okay. of a, yeah, yeah. you know, but as a man, a real man shows compassion, admits when they're wrong, um, is okay crying and being emotional at a movie or seeing something and, and you know being vulnerable um those types of being i guess just being real man like not it's not soft but just being real and, and it takes a bigger man to show his softer side and, mm. and it's not not even softer but it's 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 more emotional real. more emotional it's it, that's okay Right, because up until this point, I believed that it wasn't okay, and it was like not. And when I say this point, I'm not talking about today, but yeah. in recent right. time, right. years, I've I've developed that, and that's something that I'm still developing. Patience being something. Okay, I got to add to that toolbox. I've spent my entire life adding toolboxes to be the best lion, to be the biggest, most ferocious, courageous, strongest, fastest, baddest ass lion out there. But now I'm starting to develop my toolbox on the other side of that. And that's exactly why 
Um, we have another. Uh, it's. I promise. It's our last gift. <laughs> last gift. Uh, it, man, you, you. it's actually. It's actually our award. It's a new thing that we're gonna do. The people that we're gonna bring in, um, that are heavy hitters, just like the men right wow. here. Um, we're gonna give him the award. I, I put it only in green tissue paper, like in uh, like Hawaii. And this is the Aloha Hour Hama Award. Wow! And this is for you. <laughs> what? You this get the Hama is Award. absolutely amazing. <laughs> This is amazing, Chad, I told you, he's thank the marketing you so genius. Whatever you need, get your shit ready. Man, just, that's thank the you guy. so much. I mean, I was coming on here not even expecting to get any gifts. They didn't want it. It wasn't even a thing. Yeah, yeah. But look, man, yeah, we're, like. We're not. Wow. Yeah. Again, you need wow, Brad, you call me. Wow, <laughs> you need wow, Hammer, you I mean, call I'm, him. <laughs> you are, you I'm are, speechless, brother. You I appreciate Hama, this. And you deserve this Hammer Award. Thank you for everything you do for our community, for the people around you. Thank you for inspiring everybody around you. It's uh, It was a great honor talking to you we could have sat here yeah for another bro. hour hey, hey, listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do Anything me this favor need I need to ask you a question listen, I'm gonna yeah, ask go, you the go. question yeah, yeah. now go, go, go. we gotta do this but outside of this space yeah. build a relationship you know I wanna 100%. get to know you a little bit more and I wanna know about your family both of you guys and build a relationship that's what I'm about so 100%. we will be able to talk and have a drink and just sort of relax <laughs> and just right on. do that more so do me that honor thank you it was my pleasure to be here guys, guys. thanks yeah, so no, much it's a huge honor bro seriously you're yeah, yeah, amazing oh, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah he's the hammer yeah. Chad Owens Hello, thank God. you very much aloha aloha right. Good night. Ahoy thank ahoy. you yes,